Today it's a privilege to be joined by Chandler and Jade Rogers, who I love the story, just a little bit I know of you guys already. Um, I love the story of how we go through life, we have some sort of issue that is common to a lot of people, or for sure uniquely common to some and to you and I, <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll kind of I'll own that as well. And then, but yet you, you go beyond just, I'm going to try to tackle this problem. I'm going to actually tackle this problem and bring other people along on the journey with me because of, you know, that's that, uh, that's that mantra of what one person can do. Another person can do. And so it's great when we can do these things together. So welcome to the show guys. It's great to meet you. Thanks so much, Thank Corey. You. Good to meet you. So let's just jump right in. Um, I, I'm uh, we would have talked about this a little bit at the beginning as when Pam and I were doing the show to, to prep this. Um, but tell everybody a little bit about you guys and your story and where you are. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess to introduce us as a couple first, uh, Jade and I have been married, let's see, almost four years now. We met while we were at college. And uh, I, I guess something about both of us, we grew up both moving around a lot. We never lived in anywhere more than a few years. Her family was military. My dad yeah. just didn't like staying at the same job more than a few years. <laughs> okay. And uh, we were both the oldest. And I think one piece of my story that leads into, I guess, the themes that we'll talk about today uh, started when I was in high school and I was first exposed to pornography. And I grew up in a household that was pretty religious and my parents were very overt about uh, their values and trying to instill those values in us. And I think for the most part, like growing up, I had this desire to be a good person, uh, to succeed in school and sports and mm -hmm. my faith and whatever else, it, you know, was important to me. And I, I remember like when I was kind of first exposed to pornography and even masturbation, just kind of, you know, as a teenager, my body's changing. Instagram was just becoming a thing at the time and social media. Uh, I just, you know, didn't really understand, I think what was happening. It wasn't like I was going out and and seeking it at the time. But I think my early journey with pornography just was kind of a, a factor of being young and not really understanding what was kind of being thrown at me through technology. Yeah. And I think about a year after I was first exposed, I think I had this wake up moment where I realized, you know, I think that these behaviors I'm engaged in, I like, I don't feel like I have control over them anymore. It had become compulsive. And I had made some, you know, attempts at you know, I don't like how this is affecting my relationships around me. I just feel a little bit more depressed or anxious. I don't want this in my life. Um, but, you know, as time went on, I felt like less and less control and I wasn't able to stop. And so is, this the, is this the classic? Um, I recognize this is something that's not good. So therefore, I'm just going to white knuckle it. Here we go. I'm dead rededicating. I'm down. I'm going. Here we go again. It's only cycle. to fall right. Yeah, it's like I, I can try harder. You know, yeah. when I try hard. I can, I can get that a, I can, you know, perform at track or cross country. I was running a lot at the time. This was the first time for me that I like tried super hard and it didn't work. And I think that had a huge impact on my self-confidence and the narrative that was going through my head okay. about, you know, I'm a, I'm a failure. Cause I'm, I think it was even less about, you know, feeling like it was going against my value system and more about why can I not do what I say I'm going to do? Why is willpower not enough right now? Am I just weak? Uh, I think that was really hard. That was a big theme in the beginning of our relationship too. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I'm talking about it like this was still, you know, <laughs> 16, 17 year old me who was, you know, I talked to hundreds of people who have had similar stories and most of them, it's not 16, 17 where they're starting to change things. It's 10 years into the marriage or something. Mm -hmm. So I feel pretty fortunate on one hand that I did try to uh, figure out how to navigate healing in a way and work through some of these cognitive beliefs early on. But as Jade just mentioned it, it wasn't a fast turnaround or a fast journey by any stretch. <laughs> yeah. It's an all too common path. And it's also one that it seems like when you're introduced to it early, like I had the belief of, well, marriage will solve it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'll, Cause I can <laughs> actually <laughs> participate in it. Therefore it'll go away, right? Yeah. It's going to be easy then. And no, nah, it doesn't work Not out true. that way either. <laughs> yeah, totally. So I think one of the important parts of my story in getting help was essentially stumbling upon a 
local group that was especially for young adults that were trying to work through unwanted pornography habits and essentially just manage to have healthier sexuality. And I remember like the idea of talking to people about it, like, like anyone else who's dealt with anything hard or this topic in particular, talking to other people does not sound fun. Um, I wasn't thrilled at the idea, but I remember going to that first group, it was over zoom and meeting with seven or eight other guys. It was led by a clinician. Um, and I just remember seeing as they were kind of sharing their stories and we were getting to know each other, like the thought came to my mind, wow, these guys are pretty normal and cool and they have goals and aspirations like I do. You know, I wouldn't walk around like thinking these people are pedophiles or, you know, anything crazy like that. And I think that was a, a start in me changing the narrative of how I saw myself and realizing that, you know, just because I'm, uh, you know, engaging in a behavior that I feel like I can't control that goes against my ideal value system doesn't mean that I'm a failure. It doesn't need to define my overall success that I'm having in my life or how I see myself. And that was a lesson again, that, you know, I'm still learning. It's, it's kind of come gradually. There was kind of another wave that I think Jade, you should share about our story when we met later, but that was kind of the early inception of realizing that doing this with other people, not doing it alone actually helped me break some of those patterns that were keeping me stuck. Okay. Well then let's jump to the, the two of your story and how, well, how Jade fits into this. That's where, that's where she does a much better job than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, we met in college, like we said, and we, our relationship progressed really quickly. Um, we met and really quickly after that, we started dating. And then one day it was like, not that long into our relationship. Like only I accidentally, a few weeks. I think. Yeah, a few weeks into our relationship, <laughs> I accidentally like blurted out that I loved him. And Not he planned. was like, oh, uh, well, before we like progress our relationship further, let me talk to you about something. Um, and that's when he asked me if I had ever known anybody that struggled with pornography um, or masturbation. And I was like, um, do I now know someone? <laughs> And I guess he proceeded to kind of explain to me kind of his experience um, working on this um, challenge that he um, mm -hmm. has gone through for so many years. He asked me to not interrupt him, not ask any questions till the end, which was actually good um, because then I got to really hear the whole story and really hear how he thought about it, all the things that he's done um, to overcome it. And I will say that like, it did shift my view of him because um, I wasn't really sure how to wrap my head around that. It kind of felt like, I, I guess I was trying to figure out like, how could someone so good that I was so, that I liked so much that I like, saw all these amazing qualities in, um, how could he struggle with something that um, to me, um, I felt like was hurtful or yeah. bad, quote unquote. And yeah, that was just how I was, was thinking at the time. Um, when I think one piece of that was like Jade mentioned, I didn't just like blurt out, you know, and drop this on her and let her process it. I kind of had the thought, like, I want to share with her a little bit more through like a story driven lens and show her the ways in which I've been growing throughout this process. And I think at the time I was, you know, still learning that it was way more than just about pornography. It was actually a lot about me developing a better relationship with myself and understanding, you know, what healing means and how it applies mm -hmm. to a lot of different things, not just this and trying to show her that, you know, there was, there was effort and there was things that I was learning, even though I hadn't solved it uh, all the way. And, and she was hurt by it. That didn't change that. Yeah. Or at least I just didn't know how to think about it. I didn't know what to do with the new information, um, how it would affect our relationship or affect how I viewed him. Right. Which um, typically the things we don't completely comprehend, we run from, uh, avoid at fill in a blank, if yeah. you will, and just and label I, it in a certain way. Right. Exactly. So I, at the moment, like in the moment, I think I remember feeling a little bit like a little bit, like I wanted to run, but at the same time I knew what I saw in him. I knew that he was a good person. I knew that he had all of these different qualities that I loved and that I was super excited for and that I wanted in a husband. 
um, one day. And so I guess that confusion, that like question mark right there um, made me stay, made me like want to figure it out. Like, how do I think about this? Like there's this Mm -hmm. discrepancy. How to reconcile the discrepancy. Yeah. And so I guess like the next few days, um, I remember I had like a final exam or something and I couldn't focus because I was just thinking about this and trying to figure out what to do with this new information that I knew about Chandler. Um, And so I'm very religious. So I prayed um, and I was just trying to write down my thoughts and I was just asking God to help me see this differently, see this the way that he saw it. I'm like, I'm sure God, you understand this better than I do. I'm sure like I'm looking at this from one angle and I can't see the full picture. I know I can't because there's this discrepancy. There's this, like, I need to reconcile these two pieces together. And I'm sure God knows a way to do that. Um, So I was, I was like writing down all my thoughts. I remember just like feeling like suddenly getting this clarity that um, the challenge that Chandler was going through and challenges that we all go through, it's a type of investment in who we can become and who we're meant to be. Um, If we didn't have these hard things, we'd never develop the qualities that come with working on Mm -hmm. these hard things, right? And I realized that all of the things I loved about Chandler, um, his empathy, his strength, his diligence, um, his patience, all those things came from this challenge that he has been working on for so many years. And like, I I really feel like from that moment on, it was kind of a miracle to me. From that moment on, I was just really confident in my ability to be in that relationship with him um, and to help walk with him through this journey. I felt honored in a way because I knew that he was gonna become such an amazing person because of this, because he Mm -hmm. was working so hard on this. Um, and I really loved, it's almost like I, I was able to see his potential and I was falling in love with that potential, um, as well. Um, well, thanks. (laughs) That's, that's, that's really strong, Jade. I mean, that's, that's one of those to, to at least be able to have the courage to step back and, and re-examine and evaluate and and then decide in some ways. And it's not like it's a blind decision either at that point. Right. Cause I, I, cause that's one of the things that's always fascinating to me about marriage because, you know, I've, I've come across all these different uh, statements or phrases that, you know, if you go anywhere in social media, you'll hear these different th- thoughts that are thrown out there that are, they're, they're factual and they're true, but they're incredibly difficult to do. Right. And, mm-hmm. but yet we all fall victim to it. Cause one of my favorite ones that I've heard, is the statement of if I tolerated my uh, friends talking to the me the way I talk to myself, we would not be friends. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Right? And so it's just, but it's so easy to see somebody else's struggle or pain or bad judgment and just cast all kinds of stones at them, not recognizing, wait, 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 wait. I, I probably do something similar. It, it's not in the same way. It manifests itself some way else. I mean, because it's two fallen people. It's it's two broken people even. Uh, right. And the hope would be our brokenness makes enough sense. We both can be better, right. <laughs> if you will, well, right? Yeah, I feel like that was a big theme in our relationship. And it still is, honestly. Like, he has his problems. I have mine. And I don't see one problem as worse than the other. I think we both struggle in so many mm-hmm. ways and we need to be there for each other and we can both hurt each other and still be there for each other, you know? And I think realizing that a, a lot of, I think where we can drive satisfaction and joy in this life, especially in a marriage. Um, I think we've had a lot of these experiences in the first few years of our marriage is embracing these difficult aspects that we might be struggling with internally ourselves or that our spouse is struggling with and really trying to develop the skills to not run, to not like fight them away, to not pretend they don't exist, to, to be able to um, confront them with empathy, with, you know, gentleness and curiosity and with persistence, because Mm -hmm. if we want to become better, happier, you know, more, you know, well-rounded people, whatever your definition or measuring stick is of how you want to go through life. Like there's going to be any number of obstacles. And I love that Jade has helped me understand that we shouldn't look at one as any, any more, you know, bad than another, even if 
some may be more destructive or difficult than others um, if we can choose to have the same type of approach with trials generally and not freak out just because one feels potentially more threatening to the relationship. I think we're, we're better equipped to, to manage them in a healthy way. Well, and that's the insidiousness thing about marriage. A lot of ways that we meet and fall in love with somebody that is going, is going to expose the thing I don't want to have to face in myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? but it's, that's just gonna happen most of the time in the sense i mean my wife has gotten so good at walking away from different things which would be quote unquote dust ups or disappointments or frustrations that happen between us and asking herself what's this exposing in me what is this what is this about because it was something that where she was putting too much on the way i was supposed to be or she hoped i would be and how could you not read that? And I do the same thing. I mean, my, my struggle is I will too often not be vocal enough and think she'll just read my mind and the cues. And she is a straight, blunt, tell it like it is woman that <laughs> drives me crazy, but I absolutely love. And the reason it drives me crazy because it makes me have to be the same Yeah, in some ways, which I've got to then look at what's going on in me and how this has evolved over time. Because what you guys are describing is something that's, I think, all too common. And I love the idea you're stating that we, we hierarchy sin when yep. it's still just sin mm -hmm. and it's destructive, you know, uh, pornography and betrayal and acting out and all those different things. Yes, they're destructive. So is judgment you know, being judgmental and selfish and greedy and, you know, that's, that's destructive. Yeah. And it, if we can look at that, I think you can start to recognize kind of like what you found out in the group. And this is one of the things I found in the groups I run when you recognize they're just real people, including the leader, i.e. me in the groups I run and they hear my, what real life is for me in those moments, they're like, Whoa, okay. <laughs> This is different. They're all just real people. So yeah. pivot there. How did, how did that journey you guys have had evolve into the, the technology you've created now and the benefit of it? Yeah. Well, so I, I got back involved with groups, uh, in college as well over my, you know, multi-year journey of having some success, facing some setbacks, learning some things, having more setbacks, make some progress. You know, I, I tried to, to continue to make attending groups a thing that, um, that was a, always a part of my healing formula because I noticed that, um, my propensity is to, to isolate and to try to figure out how to figure things out myself mm -hmm. because I'm someone who, when I, again, I think to myself, I can do this if I just work hard and put more effort forward. Um, and I'm continually humbled and reminded that I can't. And that's good because I actually think that um, learning through these group experiences, uh, it's, it's taught me that I'm so much better because I involve other people in my process. Even if it's not that I couldn't necessarily have done it without them, um, it's, it's that my journey was so much more filled with growth and less misery um, because I had these other people who were in the same boat. And so I, I guess like how this turned into technology is I, I had spent a lot of time, I guess, like trying to figure out how do I make better use of these other guys that I've now got, you know, saved as contacts in my phone who I see on Thursday nights, um, you know, because the other six days of the week, um, I'm struggling or, you know, going through something stressful or an urge hits and I'm, you know, home alone. Uh, I want to be able to be better at reaching out and leveraging this support network that I built. And it felt like every time we were coming back to group, there were people saying like, yeah, Tuesday, the other day, like this happened. And yep. yeah, I don't know why I didn't reach recovery out. Recovery path. Exactly. Right. It's like, I don't really know why I didn't reach out. And we're like, dude, like we could have helped. <laughs> And, or, or, you know, maybe it wasn't even about a relapse or a slip up. It was like, you know, we all commit to journaling for 15 minutes and exercising, whatever it was that we're kind of focused on in the program that week. And, you know, we come back seven days later and half the guys are like, I didn't really do it. And it's like, well, if we had known halfway through the week, because if there was transparency that half of us were doing nothing, you know, maybe there would be some more peer pressure to not just, uh, 
okay. be negligent. And so it just got me thinking, like I had become very open about my story and just kind of personally realizing that I, I really want less people to spend years doing this alone before they realize that that's just not the way to find healing. I want to lead by example and just be open with all of the friendships where I feel comfortable and, and giving other people an opportunity if they so choose to share with me uh, things that they're going through. And I found like so many of my friends either were currently dealing with a very similar thing or had in the past or struggling with something else. And so I just got thinking a lot about how can I, how can I help people struggle less in isolation, to stop fighting alone, to team up more with other people. Um, and, and just got this feeling that there's something special about having a support network filled with other people in the same boat, as well as friends and family members who love you. I'll use spouse as, as an example. Jade doesn't have the same struggles that I do, but she's a part of my support system and we have a very different relationship. But if it were only her, and sometimes it has been only her and my support system, uh, you know, it's not, it's not good. Sometimes it's kind of very, no, no very spouse tricky. Is an account, yeah. No spouse is an accountability partner. That is something yeah. I have said for the 11 and a half years of this show. That is, <laughs> and I would, podcast. I would say, amen, brother, that, that is just a very tricky accountability relationship to have. And it is way easier with other people who are in the same boat. Yeah. And so we, it was a school project at the time we were in our junior year, me and some friends, uh, were in a coding class and we were like, you know, what if we built an app that made it easy for people to get matched in a group of seven or eight other people? Uh, who are dealing with the same issue. And we were just only focused on people who wanted to overcome unwanted pornography habits at the time um, and, and make it easy and non awkward to kind of stay semi anonymous, you know, use your first name if you want, put a real profile picture if you want, but you don't have to show up face to face for a meeting and you essentially get a curated group with some basic accountability features to help you be in a better support system and find that easier. And so we started it, launched it as a, a project initially for this class and quickly realized as we had people downloading it and giving feedback that people really were finding a lot of value in it. Mm -hmm. And we were getting all sorts of requests for like, what if it did this and what if it did that? Um, and we started working with a lot of therapists that I'd kind of known over the years and their peers, figuring out how could we build a tool that would help people who were already even working with um, some sort of professional to get help and complement that with Relay as a tool to give you a more robust support system and infrastructure for accountability. And, and that's kind of the, the whole, how, how it got started. And then we ultimately decided to continue working on it once we graduated and is now essentially our, our full-time gig with the goal to grow this platform that helps people find help together um, to be their best selves. Yeah. And, and, and that's the missing piece in a lot of the journeys I think that people have when they go at it alone or they go at it as a spousal unit is yeah. they don't have people Yeah, yeah. that the, the importance, I mean, this is, I've told guys this of all the years I've been in the field, uh, you know, for 20 years of being a therapist now, and I'll have countless over the years come back with, I'm just really struggling with pornography. I don't know how to like, Hey, the number one step, towards that is walk alongside other people in yeah. this journey of your yeah, gender. Totally. You know, hairy leg dudes need hairy leg dudes <laughs> with them. You know, it's just Absolutely. the way you go. It's just the best way you can do it to, to recognize one. I'm not a, I'm not alone. I'm not abnormal. And if I find a group that's judgment free in large part, but also in essence, demanding more, yeah, yeah. then that's huge. Yeah. I kind of think about it. I, I just love the principle of working together. Honestly, it's something that I'm working on right now. I don't have the same struggles, but I have other struggles and I'm not very good at asking for help or mm -hmm. um, allowing other people into my journey. And that's something I'm working on a lot, but I have to remind myself that um, like, why else would we be on a planet with other people? Why aren't we on a solo planet with just us? Or why are we in family units? Why do we have parents and siblings? Or yeah, why do we get married? Why do we have communities? Why, like, why do we have all these things? It's because we're not designed to progress alone. It's impossible. Yeah. We can only go so far by ourselves. And you, you kind of mentioned it earlier, like having a spouse, it basically holds up a mirror to you and shows you all the things that you need to work on. Like that's, that's why we need other people. They help us see our blind spots. They help us 
they share their experiences with us that can strengthen our perspectives. And um, yeah, I just, I really just believe that it doesn't matter what challenges you have or what weaknesses you have in all aspects of your life. The only way to really get where you want to go is to do it with other people. Right. And that's, and I'm glad you're pointing that out, Jade, because what you, what you've created with Relay is more than just a journey for dealing with pornography. It, it's a journey for dealing with whatever, with other people who have yeah. either the same, the same journey or close enough related yeah. that will get along and, and lift each other higher. Cause I, I love with the mastermind groups I run, I think of them as foxhole mentalities um, mm -hmm. in the sense that you're with a group of people that you're invested in because one, you've ponied up some money to be a part of it and some time yeah. to be a part of it. And it's a pretty big commitment to be a part of them. Um, then I know I've got guys in there that are working to do their job. And if I get wounded, quote unquote, they can help me. But if I refuse to do my job, they can't help me. You know, that's the way I think of accountability. I think too often, maybe this has been your journey to uh, guys in the, in the church, a lot of ways, accountability is often thought of in the way I was brought up in a lot of ways and experienced was, well, I'm a part of this group. You guys help me now. Yep. Yeah. You help me. <laughs> I have to have self accountability. And like Jade, you're talking about a, a courage to say, I need help. Yeah. I'm lost. I'm broken. I'm struggling. I'm whatever, rather than hoping people will read between the lines. Yeah. And pick up. And, and even being in a place where other people are there, you know, saying that same thing and giving you a chance, even if you're, you know, feeling just as broken, like you don't have it any more figured out than they do. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things I've learned through relay that's so powerful is you don't have to be perfect to turn outwards and help support others. And that actually helps you on your own change yep. journey. Because I, I think when I started caring about not only building Relay, but in these interactions, I, I mean, even throughout Relay, I would have customers reach out to us and, you know, say like, hey, could you swap me into a different group? Like, you know, I'm for whatever reason, like wanting to just add a second group, or maybe I don't connect as well with these guys or some people left. I would help them out and I would take just a second to text them and, and let them know like, hey, I'm the original creator of the app. Just wanted to like, you know, let you know how much it means to me that, you know, I was here before and, and understand this journey. That's why we're doing this and ask them a few questions about their journey. And I just remember having those interactions. I start to build friendships with people who are using Relay and it was helping me more throughout this process because I was caring about yeah. more and more people, even though I was still, you know, figuring things out too. Like you're I really think, connecting. Yeah. People, like I think it's, yeah. it's the connection. And even if you don't have something crazy insightful, you know, you don't need to be a trained psychologist to show up for someone and helps oh, you. Well, and that's, that's where you actually get the deeper connection anyway, is when, when you're vulnerable with the struggle and someone else is vulnerable enough to be, to let that struggle just be right. Yeah. Cause Jay, go back to you guys at the beginning of you guys, story as we're wrapping this up when he, when Chandler unloads, Hey, I want to tell you, tell you my journey. I want to full disclosure here. Uh, it's very easy to you know, throw a quick solution at it or be blind, rose colored glasses at, Oh, our love will make it through. We'll figure it out <laughs> rather than, okay, wait, how do I create room enough for this real thing? Hmm. And, and yeah. turn, I don't have to turn towards it or run towards it. I just kind of create room. And without feeling it. like I need to change him. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of my development as a wife too. It's like, you want to fix things or help them, but, I think the biggest growth that we can do as spouses is to be able to hold space mm -hmm. for the weakness. Um, and that's the scariest growth there is too, right? right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Jade has been, you know, I think she took a lot of ownership for even like, she wasn't just like, you figure this out, you know, and I'll, I'll give Sometimes you the space to I figure did. it out. Sometimes well, sure. I did and that was helpful. You're, you're still, <laughs> you're still a human for sure. It was still hurtful, but I think at her healthiest and a lot of times she's, tried to figure out how do I level up my mindset and the way mm -hmm. that I'm seeing things to, so that I can manage my own healing, you know, given that this hurt her and caused need for healing as well as support Chandler and his healing. Right. And cause that's the sign. That's the simultaneous thing. I think I need to get out there at least as we wrap this up is when there's, when there's things that have gone on that are hurtful and destructive in a marriage, 
what one of the things a lot of times when, when whenever the wounded or the betrayed or the one that's just now being you know just discovering um oftentimes they become the focus of the pain and the struggle and that takes paramount rather than realizing there's pain on both sides if it's legit like wait this isn't something i want this isn't something I, i've got to still deal with the grief and the struggle and the pain on my side too and that's 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 the simultaneous thing that's really complicated for people to allow because jade have been very easy to be like yeah you got to just figure that out what what do you and then he's like yeah but i'm really struggling why are you even struggling about that that's just ridiculous well i'm kind of sad about it. how could you be sad about that hey, let you see what you've done to me you know we we get in yeah. these kinds of things that it just was almost protective mode rather than like you mentioned create space save and space think, for us i think our the the times that have brought us closest together through challenges and i feel like we've had a lot <laughs> and it's not always easy we talk we we talk like we know what we're doing but um yeah, we've gone through a lot of challenges in the past few years and the t the moments that were the closest and that have brought us together are the times when Chandler tells me how he's hurt and I tell him how I'm hurt and we're just both hurt together and we're both sad together and it's we create space for both of us to be able to be having a hard time and that's good we don't point our fingers at each other and say well you're causing this that's um, good yeah. So we've we've alluded to it. How do people find Relay? Yeah, so Relay is available in both the App Store and Play Store for iPhone and Android. Um, if you just search Relay, Improve Together, it should show up. Um, the website is www.joinrelay.app. Um, and then, you know, if anyone wants to reach out personally, like, like I said, I, I really value getting to hear people's individual stories and I'm not too busy uh, for that. So if you want to reach out to me directly, my email is Chandler at joinrelay.app. Perfect. Well, guys, thank you so much for what you're doing and, and how you help people and how you help marriages because it's, it's always so needed. And so it's great finding other people doing the same. Oh, thanks so much, thank Corey. You. you too, man.